Okay, here comes the old tater tail. You've been wanting to hear that in a long time, ain't you, Nathan? Oh, it's a pretty good old tale. I ain't told it for a long time. I might have forgot half of it. But I'll tell it the best I can. Well, once a straddle of a time, there's the <laughs> boys wanted to go hunting. Me for a run. So I, I went, okay, I just, I, I went out and got my friend, old Hen, to go hunting with me. We called him Hen, Henry's name. So I went out and hollered him up one evening, about dusk to dark, just before dark. I said, hey, Hen, you want to go hunting? Yeah, I reckon I can, you little snotty-nosed fella. I can go with you. He's older than I was, you know. He's a great big man. I'm just a young boy. Well, he got his old dog, and his uh, wife had a little lamp oil and an old Josh bottle. And I had a lantern. That's an old Josh bottle. It's a, uh, a bottle you fill up with lamp oil and put an old rag in for a wick to make you a light, if you've never seen one. So we lit out a hunt. I had, a, I had an old flashlight and a lantern. And uh, your daddy tell what, what that Josh bottle is. And uh, we went on a hunt. We was headed for the Black Mountains. We back in there in the bull, bull, you, you can see them in your house. Up in there where we used to go singing, you hear us talking about? Bull of Niners way back in that mountain. Way, way back in there. Well, there was wild hogs, birds, and everything in there then. And there's one old house way back in there. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Well, we walked and we walked and we walked and we walked. It got real dark. So Hen's lamp oil ran out of his old bottle he had. His light went out. We throwed it away. Well, I had the lantern and a shotgun, and uh, he had his old dog along. And uh, we went on, went up a big holler, and it come a big windstorm. Man, we was afraid the trees were going to blow on us and everything. We stood to death through briar patches and everything. Well, we, we walked after a while, my, my light went out. God, we was really scared then. So then we had to, uh, I think I fell, maybe it broke a blow by my lantern, and the wind blow kept blowing it out, and I just throwed it down. So we, we lit out of, I didn't light at all. <laughs> On up a big deep holler we went, we seen the light way off. Just barely could see it from, from a house somewhere. So we went to that house. We failed our way through there and got tore up of briars and wild cats and hogs all around us. So we went to that house and asked, there's no man and no woman lived there. They asked them if we let us stay all night. That we was hungry, didn't have nothing to eat, and we give them out and the rain started pouring out, the wind quit, quit blowing, and we was wet. He said, no, I said, I can't keep you for it all night. I said, Ain't got but one bed, and me and old woman's got to sleep in it. Said, well, I know where there's a handed house over across the hill right there. I'll t give you some sweet taters and let you go over to that handed house. Well, we said anything to get out of that rain and wind. So we went, cause he gave us three big sweet taters apiece. Give me three and him three. So we lit out, thanked the old man, and took off with the sweet taters. Red old biggers, they're about a foot long. So we walk, and we walk, and we walk, and we walk. We finally come to this old house he's telling us about. It was out in a little cleared place, and the bushes and things been cleared off. We walked in, and the door was standing about half open to the old house. One old big log room's all there was in it, and a big fireplace in one end, and a table is sitting in the middle of the floor, and one old rickety bed is over in the corner. So we got to hunting for some dry wood to build us a fire. We finally got us a bunch of fire going and got it blazing pretty good and and uh, we decided we'd put us a tater in the roast. We was getting awful hungry, you know. So I told Henry go ahead and roast his taters first. And I'd, I'd sit back and smoke a little bit while he's watching his taters get done. So the fire kind of died down a little bit. He stuck with his taters in the ashes and covered it up a little bit with fire coal. And hit the, hit the more than got done. Something reached down the chimney and took the tater up the chimney. He and he looked around. Say, what'd you do with my tater, boy? I said, I didn't get it. He said, something reached down the chimney then got it. Oh, man, he's mad. He pulled out another big tater and stuck him in the place of that and stuck in there. 
Well, it stayed there a long time. It roasted pretty well done. And so something reached down that chimney again, snatched it up the chimney. Man, he's really hot then. He jumped up and hollered, say, hey, what's going on around here? He's about half shot, you know. He took him a few little drinks, and he's, he's kind of wobbly-headed. So he said, I'll roll his sleeves up one sleeve. I think get ready to fight that thing. But I didn't want about to. I knew what's happened. That man said that place was haunted. So we were scared already, or I would. Kind of sobered up. So he said, I'll put this to the tater, and I'll sit down on the thing. Like, gosh, I'll, I'll, he might get hit. So he put one in the fire and sat down the other end. So uh, it stayed there. That end got done. He turned around and sat down the hot end. Man, it burnt Stevie Bridget. He jumped up and hollered. He said, hey, I can't do that. So he took him an old sack and was throwed over the end of it and sat down on it. And he fell about half asleep while that end was getting done. And we got nearly done. I looked over and I seen some little hairy arm come down that chimney. And it, it just picked him, Taylor, and all about that fire. Up the chimney it went with it. He and he stumbled over the floor and he, 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 he raised all kinds of sand that time. He said, wait a minute. I'm going to fetch him that that thing here what it is. I said, you better not, boy. That thing will tear you all to pieces. He finally climbed down. I told him to go over and sit down on the bed. I roast my tater. So I took one of my taters in the fire. I knew what had happened. That thing would come down and get mine, too. But I let it sit there and get pretty well doing. So I turned the other end around, stuck it in the fire. It got pretty well doing. I turned my head to pick up a piece of wood to throw in the fire, and that dang darn thing reached down and got it. Up the chimney it went. I said, Hen, you see what happened? Got my tater, too. I mean, you both going to get hungry. So I stuck another in the fire. But it got done, done the same way. Every time I turned my head for anything, he'd reach down and snatch it up the chimney. Well, I put my last tater in. So me and Henry, we sat around watching it, bait. Well, it got pretty well done. And I'd be dead blamed if that thing didn't raise me and he and both from off the floor, taking that tater away from us after it got done. Up the chimney, it went with it. I said, well, let's go to bed then. We can't, can't have nothing to eat. I see that right now. We, we done. We done have to do that our, our food. So I went up, fixed that old bed up, and he and he pulled his britches off and crawled in. I just laid down the side of the bed with my clothes on. I knew that that would be hands after us all night. Set my shotgun up in the corner. He and he didn't have any his leather gun. So after a while, we, I, I dozed off to sleep. I heard something hit the floor. So I looked up. There's just a little dim light from the fire. I looked up, and there's a man's arm fell down. I went over and picked the arm up and threw it over behind the table. And the, the table sat around the middle of the old big room. So in a few minutes, I more got to bed. Something, the other arm fell down. I throwed it over the table. After a while, one leg fell down. Oh, big hairy leg, big toes are flopping around the end. Foot and all sticking on the end. I throwed it over the table. After a while, another leg fell down. I throwed him over the table. Hey, been lit almost to sleep. Boy, the office racket you ever heard in your life. Something come down that chimney, the ashes flew everywhere. Man, it was a dust in there. You couldn't see your hand before you. Fire scattered all over the house. A big old body fell down. Old big hairy looked like a big ape's body. It rolled halfway across the floor. I went over and I kicked it over behind the table. Well, we laid there and I, I was nearly asleep. I said, well, it's all the hands is over with. I forgot about his head. After a while, that head rolled down. It bounced, bounced, bounced going across like a big rubber ball across that floor. And then big eyes rolled in, looked like bloodshot. Man, that's the ugliest looking thing you ever looked at in your life. Old big hair ears pointed at the tip, looked like a, something from Mars or the moon one. So I kicked that old head over like a baseball or football, rolled him over behind the table. <coughs> Went back to bed. Well, in about 30 minutes, we looked over behind that table, just a little dim light. I throwed some more stuff on the fire, we got to stir it up a little bit. Saw that old arms and legs are working around that body. The legs was fastened onto the body. Arms was fastened onto the shoulders. And that old head rolled across and fastened up on, his, on where the neck's supposed to be. Man, that thing stood up on them hind feet. His head almost hit the ceiling. 
That's the awfulest looking monster ever you looked at. The fire looked like a fire out of its eyes. No big tongue hanging out. Man, I grabbed my daggone shotgun. I, I, I made through the door. He and he and they woke up. But I was just I opened the door and slammed it. But he and he, he, he seen the thing. So there's a window over one side of the room. He raised and took a high dive through that window. He went out, out on his head, right under, right under a big apple tree. Well, that thing went to the door, come, 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 out, come out, the, <laughs> out the door after me. Because it went around the house and seen him. Didn't see me. I went around one side and he went the other. It seen him, took after him. He and he shot about five times with his leather gun at it, but didn't even stagger it. That thing run him away up through that old orchard, plumb out of sight, and him a holler and every breath. Help, help, that thing's about to get me. He finally run into a big tree, and that thing passed him up, making 90 miles an hour. We never did know what it would. So I got one up and never did see it no more after that. So, but we didn't get no taters. So boy, that scared We never did go hunt no more up in that section. You wouldn't blame us, would you? Wouldn't go back either. That's the last of tater tail. So I can't, I can't go hunting back in that section no more. I'll tell you another after a while.